Welcome back to the event, everyone. I'm your host, John Malonka, and this next topic is something that we all need, a good night's sleep. Uh, CBD has been known to help deepen sleep and even bring on vivid dreams. Discover how insomniacs and even high-performance athletes are using CBD to increase the quality of their sleep and how you can too. The topic is how can uh, CBD help you sleep better through the night, and I'd like you to uh, I'd like to introduce you to our next presenter. It's Molly McLaughlin. Hi, Molly. Hi, great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited about this. This is a this is a big topic for me. I mean, sleep is so important and I want to get into how many hours of sleep is 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 uh, best for all of it. Could you, I'm, you're a sleep expert, so you hear a lot of it. So we'll get in it. Let me, let me, let me read your, your impressive, uh, your bio here. So Molly is a creator of a, is Sleep is a Skill, a company that optimizes people's sleep through a unique blend of technology, accountability, and behavioral change. The company was born from scratching her own itch after a lifetime of poor sleep habits culminated into a mega challenging bout of insomnia, which is the worst, for months without end. Uh, with a background of psychology and human behavior, she went down the rabbit hole to solve her sleep disturbances without sleeping aids. Uh, she became fascinated with uh, chronic chronobiology and by extension, its practical applications to restore a state of homeostasis, not only to her sleep, but also to her life as a whole. Uh, knowing the difference between a life with sleep as well as without, she's now dedicated her life to sharing the forgotten skill set of sleep. So, boy, oh boy, I think you, 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 you cut a lot of people's ears here because uh, <laughs> sleep's tough when you don't, when you, it, it's a domino effect when you, you miss that first night. And it just do, 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 and it and it we we've talked about this in the show. We've talked about this on on my podcast. Um, so welcome. And so it sounds like you, you've you've experienced that crazy uh, uh, night after night of being an insomniac. And and I mean I've done everything at at one point. And so uh, it sounds like you have and you made a career out of it. So. Uh, Please share. Uh, yes, absolutely. I have uh, done it all. Actually, on my website, I have this whole rundown, almost comical, of the number of things that I threw against the wall to try to see what would fit or, you know, hit or stick all those yeah. things, you know, in order to make a difference with my sleep. And it was just one after another after another. Um, and what's so valuable, I think, about uh, kind of coming from the context that sleep really is a skill in the 21st century um, is that we, many of us are so off of these sort of um, ancient cycles in a lot of ways. So understanding these circadian rhythms um, and certainly we'll get into how that works with the endocannabinoid system, but uh, these rhythms are really powerful for aligning our days and our nights. And when we get thrown off, like for me, my story is that I was, uh, really a night owl for just so, so many years of my life and thought that was how it was. I had a lot of labels. Oh, I'm this night owl. I'm a short sleeper. I'm an insomniac. I'm all these things that I put on to myself to uh, justify or rationalize that behavior. But really when it hit that insomniac period, when I just could not sleep, that's what um, actually was kind of the blessing to take the actions to restore that, um, uh, workability. And yeah. I think that that's kind of one of the exciting things about things like CBD is it's uh, part and parcel to what's happening when using those. You know, and I love the natural part because I remember years ago, I, I was, I could not sleep and it went day one, day two, day three, and I'm losing my mind and yes. I'm highly allergic to whatever's in cold medicine. So knock on wood, I'm, oh, I, sure. I, I, I don't get, I said, I don't want to jinx it, but yeah, knock on wood. I don't get, I haven't been sick. I just say in a long, long, long years. And, and there's something in NyQuil and DayQuil and Tylenol that is something, but I needed sleep. And I kid you not, Molly, I drank NyQuil to, to, to I, I had to sleep. I didn't sleep. Yeah. And I remember I showed up to work and I remember we had a, a, a guest in the office that came in from another office and they just looked at me like, is this the guy <laughs> you want working? And he seems like he's all, I mean, I was just loopy. Uh, yeah. So I know how important sleep is. And then uh, years later, which is the present year, you know, I've been in the cannabis industry since 2010, 11. And seeing this natural cannabinoid, which I use every night, uh, CBD. And so can you talk about, because um, uh, this question comes up all the time. Does it work for this? Will it help me with this? And so this one, we, will CBD help me sleep better or sleep through the night? Because sleeping through the night is important. Some people will fall, you know, different forms of cannabis, uh, say ingesting via smoking, only last 
two, three, four hours for some of them and they're wide awake. And so, but CBD I have found has kept me uh, a nice sleep throughout the night. And are you seeing that with you in your practice? Yes. So, um, uh, standing in the, in our approach with sleep as a skill, it's a lot about, um, understanding the behavioral components for sleep, um, and things that we can do to improve our sleep through optimizing a lot of our behaviors, literally starting from when you immediately wake up during the day. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but so if we get into this process of CBD and how can it help us sleep through the night, um, one, we want to just get a sense of where you're at and, uh, really be able to experiment and have a baseline so that we can, ex you know, really get in deep to understand, um, is this CBD type and dosage and ratio and all of these things, are these going to help to make a difference with my sleep? Um, and, but by and large, one of the things that I find so valuable about CBD in particular, um, is that it can be a great place to start with, you know, our, we're not seeing particular, uh, crazy side effects, um, that are coming out of CBD, uh, this kind of natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, so when we're standing in that, what we want to be able to do is then help people to make a difference with their sleep, uh, through using that and, uh, understanding, are you someone that is coming into the game, uh, having taken sleep aids over the years? So I've had a ton of clients that have a lot of success with actually weaning off. And of course you always want to do that with the direction of your doctor and, uh, be mindful about that. But when you're able to use something like CBD to help wean off from that, it just can be life-changing for so many people. But even if you're not in that category, uh, you know, you're just maybe experiencing kind of, um, what's very common is one or two nights throughout the week. I don't sleep well. Uh, yeah. so for those people, this can be a really also great place to start, um, that has kind of minimal scare factor of, are you going <laughs> to experience kind of a mind altering experience? So, uh, what I'm finding is that really across the board, it's been a really beneficial place to begin and then goes deeper on all the different ways that you can use it throughout the day and night. You know, you, you brought up quite a few points that I want to touch up on. It's, it's not a one size fits all. And so what right. my doses of CBD help me sleep may keep, keep you up. Right. Um, you know, do you talk about, you know, I know you're on other sleep aids is one of your questions, but what about are you drinking a cup of coffee before you go to bed? Are you drinking coffee all day long? Are you working out? I mean, are these all things that, that go in a part of that as well? Uh, yes. Great question. Because, uh, first of all, I think no matter what, if say you're, you're at the summit and you're like, yes, CBD is for me. Let me learn more about it. I think one of the things that's going to get you the best results is if you pair, um, CBD along with so many amazing behavioral changes that you can make, um, that actually certainly I wasn't aware of when I was dealing with a lot of my difficulties with my sleep, I wasn't, um, conscious of how much, you know, my light dark cycles, when I'm eating my certain types of food and sugar and glucose and all these different things will impact the quality of my sleep. Um, you know, there's so much strategy that can actually go into this. And that's why I think it's important to educate ourselves from those behavioral changes we can make. Cause it's astounding. Some of the differences, uh, that you'll find just from some of these basic principles. So when you pair those together, because it's really part and parcel to the endocannabinoid system is it's about these rhythms, mood, appetite, sleep, um, circadian rhythm. And so so if we pair that behavioral side of it, along with the supplemental side, you can really have some pretty impressive results. I'm chuckling because you said strategy when you don't sleep, yes. it is a strategy. It is a strategy. Don't, <laughs> don't touch anything, turn the lights off. Oh, you know? And so I, I I'm laughing because I've, I've been there I've experienced. So, oh my God. I literally had to read books called letting go yeah. to, to have a strategy around how do I learn how to let go? How do I learn how to calm yeah. them? Yeah. And you're right. A hundred percent, but it is there, there are things that you can really do particularly during the daytime. Um, and that applies with CBD to help improve our nights. Strategy, strategy, yes. you know, planning for the night. So, so how does CBD work? Um, you know, cause this question comes up, you know, how does it work for sleep? Does it, does it shut off the receptors Does it make you groggy? Because Lower doses of CBD, and I've done my trial there, so I know it works works with me. And so, but for our listeners, um, uh, low doses keeps me awake. You know, mm -hmm. where high doses will will, will uh, put me out, and not when I say it, it's not putting me out like knockout. Uh, it is just slowly, and I fall asleep, and I wake up. And so, can you talk about how does CBD work uh, work for sleep? Is it what, what's it doing to the brain? 
Sure. Yeah. So a couple things um, that we're finding for CBD and sleep. One, the important caveat with all these, with this conversation um, is that unfortunately we don't have as many studies as we'd like to have on CBD and all the different components, CBG, CBN, and all these different elements and how specifically they are impacting sleep. So still a lot of this is, um, uh, not say anecdotal, but certainly smaller groups than you want to have. So we do hope to be able to grow the size of our sample, you know, case, um, to be able to understand more about the specifics of, uh, because for instance, if we're talking about the endocannabinoid system and how CBD is interacting with receptors within the endocannabinoid system, as we touched on, it's kind of about those regulations of mood, appetite, sleep, um, circadian rhythm it appears that CBD is impacting um, two of those primary receptors, uh, CB1 and CB2, a little bit differently than THC. Um, so, And there's still a lot of kind of question marks on are they actually interacting with receptors that we're not even fully aware of because there are so, it's this kind of new world that um, we're navigating. Uh, so from that place, one of the, because CBD is not innately a um, sedative of a molecule, it's really more um, something that impacts in three kind of seemingly positive ways. So we have uh, the ability to improve on stress and anxiety. Um, we have the ability to improve on any inflammatory uh, acting as an anti-inflammatory, which is, uh, as you spoke about some of those over the counter, uh, sleep aids, part of what will be put into that is, uh, anti-inflammatory along with antihistamines and all these other items. Uh, but innately that when we are inflamed, often we can have difficulty falling asleep. And then thirdly, we're seeing that it can help make a difference with our pain management um, and helping when we kind of trigger in on that pain, because I have a ton of clients that will come in and that pain might be part of the reason that's keeping them awake um, at different points throughout, um, throughout the night. So if we trigger, or if we're aware of the three things that CBD can often make a difference with, um, then you can hone in on what your particular, uh, issue is there. And, and then that might make a difference on say the ratios that you come up with on this, on your own personal kind of prescription for your sleep. Uh, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of that pain element, then you might be bringing in a little bit more of the THC, uh, might, you know, kind of discuss some of those elements, but there's a lot of strategy that you'll want to almost embark on this <clears throat> from a perspective of, you know, uh, an explorer a scientist where you're actually logging your experience and how that is working for you and your sleep. I'm glad you brought up pain because I've worked with a lot of doctors and we've spoken about pain. And, and when you have that lack of sleep, as we were talking about the domino effect, it can intensify some uh, fibromyalgia patients, yes. can intensify other, other patients that are going through sleep on a regular basis or having, having issues, sleep issues on a regular basis. Um, this one comes up too. It's, 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 uh, and we, I'm glad you mentioned about the drug to drug interaction as you know, for our listeners, this is not to replace a one-on-one -on -one with your medical professional or practitioner yes. this is for informational and educational purposes only. And so if you need to titrate off of a, a sleep aid, please do it with, with a medical professional, um, involved. Uh, but back to the groggy, a lot of people, uh, for example, I use my mom when my father passed away, you know, we were just deer in, in, in the headlights uh, didn't know what was happening and I remember we couldn't sleep and her doctor prescribed us I should say uh, Ambien which I had never taken before sure. and I remember just taking a half of that and you know in the morning I was cotton mouse I was groggy and I remember my mom and I chuckle because if my dad probably didn't marry my mom, she would have been a nun. <laughs> so, so uh, but she I asked, she, she said, so cannabis was, a, wasn't her, wasn't her lifestyle is what I'm getting at as well. Yes. Um, but I remember she said to me after me being in this industry for quite some time and teaching her and seeing what, she, you know, seeing these shows that, that we're doing, she says, I think I would have tried cannabis uh, if, uh, for sleep. If, if I did not, if, if I would have known about it then after dad passed. And I have a lot of family, a lot of spouses go through this, a lot of children go through this when, when someone passes and they said, I can't be groggy the next morning. I have to be a mom. I have to be a dad. I have to go to work. I have to do machinery. Um, and so will CBD uh, make uh, someone groggy? Say if it's just, just plain, only using that, not, not, a, not any other sleep aids. 
Yeah, great question. Um, so CBD alone really should not have a groggy effect. There might be times, and so, there's so little um, understood, I think, in the masses around CBD and all these different sleep um, specific kind of concoctions. And sometimes people say, oh, it makes me uh, feel hungover in the morning or what have you. And often we can you know, go further and we often find that there's um, other remedies or herbal remedies or a bunch of different remedies that might be in a lot of their sleep, um, kind of, you know, aids so that those might be some of the things to look at around if there is that grogginess effect. Um, another thing can sometimes be if there's a difference in a ratio, and then we have a blend of different things, uh, then that could potentially be something to be aware of. But if we're talking just plain, um, CBD, because it uh, does not have that sort of um, sedative quality to it, that's really not what we're addressing with CBD, uh, then, and there's no kind of mind altering effects that happen with that, then that's often something that you don't really need to be concerned with. Yeah, and well said, sedative. I mean, that, that's per perfect description, perfect description. Um, and the topic comes up too is, um, you know, when should I take it? You know, I take, so we, we, the reason I say it is because a lot of people will always ask, what, does it work for this? And I've talked about this on the show, but when I present, I'll have a big roll of duct tape on one of my slides. And they look at me and they look at the slide thinking, hey, John, you have the wrong slide up there. And I said, actually, people always ask, does it work? Does it help with this? Does it help with that? And I said, I don't want to say it's like a million and one uses of like duct tape. But when you really <laughs> get down to it, <clears throat> you know, this plant has a, has a lot of properties. And I know you mentioned about, about the but of the other cannabinoids is about 100. I say there's about 140. Some people say 100 to 160. Uh, and each of these cannabinoids plays a role. And what Molly was sharing earlier with CBN, it's another cannabinoid that helps us sleep. CBD helps us sleep. THC helps us sleep. And so uh, back to the thing, the question about when should I take it? Um, what would you recommend? Because it affects us differently. If you go out have a have a uh, uh, a big meal before bed and you take some CBD, it might not react as quickly as if you were going to bed on an empty stomach. Uh, uh, so can yeah. you touch on my, that, that as well? Absolutely. So what I actually have people do is I tend to have people start with CBD, interestingly, during the day. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I do that is that many of, personally of the clients that are coming through sleep as a skill are dealing with some sort of uh, anxiety mm -hmm. and often, however, that might get manifested, um, you know, that's showing up as something that we're looking to make a difference with and have some um, kind of insight onto how to, or tools to approach that. Mm -hmm. uh, so beginning during the day, and we have to do kind of a low and slow um, yeah. buildup, right, of that dosage uh, approach. But so we begin there so that, because the other thing I have seen is for some, you know, I'll work with little old ladies and then if they don't know what they're taking and there can be confusion and then that um, kind of hyper aroused brain state at the, at night can, you know, maybe make them more awake than normal. So if we start and normalize the usage of CBD during the day, uh, deal with some of that daytime anxiety, because often that's what I'm seeing too, is that um, so many people are dealing with that heightened cortisol state all throughout the day. Um, and then of course, when you're getting into bed and then expecting that you're taking something that is not meant to function like a Xanax or an Ambien or to be so fast acting, um, then it can be a whole different approach. And that's one of the, the amazing approaches or uh, elements of something like CBD is that there's a broader spectrum um, for its kind of approach versus that thin line that um, is skated with uh, benzodiazepines or hypnotics. Uh, so instead we wanna do, um, really having that around one to two hours before bedtime, once you graduate into taking it during, um, during the bedtime. And from that place, you know, once you've gotten over the mystique of, is this going to make me high? And even though we say it a million times, you know, still people question that. Uh, so once we've kind of normalized it and the usage of it, then we're um, in, uh, bringing it into the bedtime. And that can be really, really helpful for a lot of people, especially approaching those three things that we discussed um, around stress and anxiety, anti-inflammatory elements, and then that pain that often seems to flare up for people in the evenings. Um, and the other thing I would mention too, is for the, when should I take it element of, uh, CBD or the question of that, um, another thing for women that I find is interesting is that, um, some of the, the dosage of this actually changes during different parts of your cycle. If you're in a menstruating age, uh, so you, uh, it's something that you kind of want to be aware of and test with, um, 
because you might have actually a different dosage during different parts of your uh, cycle, which is really interesting and has us get even more connected to our bodies and being aware of the, um, you know, what's going to give us the best results. That's great. And as a male, I probably wouldn't think of that. Um, right. Sure. <laughs> you mentioned also uh, uh, the uh, older older woman uh, in the retirement community. So please know for our listeners, you know. This, this plant's a great plant, and but it's not all created the same. So where you purchase, I mean, I know we did a, a segment on where to purchase this. Um, and so I'll just reiterate, and I, I'm certain Molly would agree, you know, I make sure it's tested, make sure it's, uh, it comes from a reputable source, uh, not at a gas station. And so what works for your friend may not work for you and vice versa. And so do, re, do some research on that. And, and we have gone in deeper into this and other, so you don't have to touch up on that, Molly. Um, melatonin, L-tryptophan, uh, some natural over-the-counter uh, uh, supplements that help with sleep. Um, I have friends that stay so far away from melatonin because they say it brings on nightmares. Um, why is that first off? And then I want to talk about this, about CBD and nightmares and, and or vivid dreams. What, why does melatonin bring on nightmares where L-tryptophan doesn't? Yeah, great question. So melatonin, and I, I do um, preface that you're right. There are a couple camps for people where some people will be more hesitant to just uh, take a lot of melatonin, whether for adverse effects um, or for concerns that they might almost build a kind of immunity because we do have to remember that first, the difference, one of the difference uh, between melatonin, say, you know, L-tryptophan or what have you is going to be that melatonin is really a hormone. And I think many of us forget um, that it is. And since we have seen it, that it's so available all over pharmacies, even now kids Kids, it's in a lot of, um, you know, kids supply you know, as in like nighttime sleep aids and what have you, um, versus there are other countries that you have to get a prescription just to have mm -hmm. melatonin period versus, um, some of the other supplements that we might be pointing to. So one, just, uh, getting grounded in that it is, uh, something that you want to be really conscious of how much you're taking. If you're beginning to get a little loosey goosey on that. Um, but for the el other element of that, um, melatonin, it, we want to be promoting dreams to a certain degree throughout, uh, throughout the night, but it's when we get into the realm of nightmares or, you know, night terrors, and it's waking us up in high heart rate and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that can be sort of the problematic thing for people. Um, but so what we instead want to do is all this needs to get normalized. And so almost coming back to that sleep as a skill perspective of the framework is that we want to start, if we're seeing some of those symptoms, um, and then we're trying to just throw, you know, high doses of melatonin or what have you at it, uh, then often the result can be more of the heightened um, dream state, especially if you are dealing with more anxiety um, and you're dealing with higher heart rate throughout the uh, course of your night, then often we can find ourselves hovering more in that REM state, which is often where our body's warmer during that period. That's the second half of the night. Um, and that's when we're experiencing more of those dreams. So that can be part of the problem that we want to be connected to with melatonin, but with CBD, um, what we're often finding is that there's not a particular, uh, or at least again, still in the uh, often, um, stories are, uh, certain small group studies, uh, that not finding as much in the vivid dreams. And particularly if you're dealing, if you have THC, many people will, uh, give that for specifically to help with nightmares and to help with PTSD and veterans, um, are kind of a group that will be honed in on this. So if that's something that is concerning you of, um, or kind of swaying you against testing out CBD, I certainly would not have that be one of my primary concerns with something like this. And so you are in part of your strategy, um, with your, with your, uh, I guess your patients, if you want to say your clients, clients, yep. uh, clients, sure. um, uh, you do incorporate CBD or a, a cannabinoid in, um, with a, with that, I guess other, other pillars of health, getting outside, getting, you know, maybe reading a book, turning your iPhone, iPad and TV off, uh, caffeine intake, getting out, getting some exercise, stretching. 
Um, is that all kind of go into to, to yes. your mindset? Oh my goodness. Okay. So that's the biggest thing for me is that behavioral change and having the frameworks to come to approach it with. Um, so I really want to underscore for anyone that's then going to be bringing in CBD and putting all this pressure on CBD to perform in the world of sleep. Um, it can really be a fantastic supplement and we'll want to bring about a whole pyramid of education around uh, improving our sleep through all the um, activities that we impart in throughout the day, literally starting from the first thing you do in the um, beginning of the morning. And so we're setting those rhythms that, you know, that endocannabinoid system is really a part of. So we're setting those ry rhythms with how we're choosing to live our life consciously through these uh, frameworks and approaches. And then CBD acts as a uh, phenomenal supplement to that. Uh, but if you, if you have it be the thing that's going to save all the things, it's going to be, um, it would behoove us to then put the pan out and then make it a whole lifestyle approach. And so, and I think it can also be a, I mean, this is just anecdotally, but, um, from a identity perspective, if we begin to really move into, uh, this more, uh, this approach of having this healthy lifestyle, um, you know, I'll have so many clients that they would have say, um, endometriosis for women and just lots of painful periods. And then they discover working with CBD and they won't even go to having say ibuprofen, Tylenol anymore. Um, and just really approach from this, I'm kind of doing a natural approach and fr from that identity perspective, Perspective, it can be a really wonderful um, uh, aid in making a difference with how we're living our life all together. Uh, so if you come from this from this plant medicine approach, it really can shift uh, the responsibility that you're putting on something external. Like for instance, when I couldn't sleep for so long, yeah. I wanted all the things, the supplements, the pills, the gadgets, the all that stuff that would transform my sleep. And, um, I think what CBD can help represent is to, uh, to get yourself back into harmony versus taking yourself off of the, um, kind of natural path of your, of your body, if that makes sense. It, it's funny because it's, it's a multi, isn't it a multi sleep aids, aren't they? Isn't it a multi-billion dollar industry? It's I mean, that's how important sleep is. Yes. Yeah. And I literally, I really don't talk too much about supplements, um, at sleep is a skill. And the only ones that I'll really often speak to, and you know, cause it's bio-individual, there might be certain things that people are dealing with, of course. Uh, but on the, on the blanket conversation, there's only really like two things that I've been comfortable to say, uh, for people to, to use more regularly is, um, magnesium glycinate because yeah. it's just so, uh, the common, um, uh, so common thing that people are deficient in, but then secondly, some version of CBD and bringing that into your kind of daily life practice. Um, and that, can really help make a difference with a number of things, but I don't like to have people, you know, spend all this money on all these different <laughs> items, um, without getting kind of their approach or their framework right around their sleep. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I am is, um, age because I'm thinking, yes. you know, I've, 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 I have friends that specialize in sleeping, uh, teaching the twins. They specialize in, in twins. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, because, you know, one twins up, the other one's sleeping, vice versa. And so mom and dad are going crazy. And so this, like you, she is, you know, uh, and I think she had twins. That's why. So she, oh, she there you go. And said, okay, I, you know what? I found what I'm good at. And so with that, um, in your practice, um, do you work with uh, clients at yes. all, all ages? Yes, definitely. And uh, so being mindful of the fact that our sleep is very much dynamic, there's still so much that we don't fully understand about sleep um, from the, from the get go, even right now. Uh, but from that place, then it's important to realize that our sleep is dynamic. It's going to change throughout the course of our life. Teenagers are, you know, um, expected to sleep a bit more than, um, than we will when we get into adult age. And then after, uh, you know, basically about often 65 is kind of the cutoff where people will start talking about it's over 65. Then you start seeing the decline in natural melatonin production. Uh, and so either way we're adjusting our, um, expectations to some degree around our sleep, but not coming from a place that we can't make a huge, huge difference with, um, our results that we're getting with, with the results, what, what's, what's a good night's sleep for a 53 year old man? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Well, that's still sort of in that realm of the um, the blanket seven to nine hours is often the um, the thrown out number. But what I think is really important is that I've helped um, clients that might come in and they say, yeah, you know, well, I, I always get around whatever, seven and a half hours. So that's that part's not a problem, what have you. But then we are tracking them with all these different sleep trackers. We look at the numbers and then we might find that's true. They might actually often always get the seven and a half hours, uh, but then we see it's all over the place. So they're doing it. Uh, you know, there might even be nine hours here and it's, they went to bed at one and then the other night they went to bed at 10 and the other night. So when we talk about that, it's not to, um, you know, just like make it wrong, but it's to help understand that it can really shift the architecture of that sleep. So that same seven and a half hours looks very different than someone who consistently, you know, goes to bed at whatever, 10 30 every night, seven days a week, the big operative, um, kind of, you know, call out being, because that can, um, help kind of program the amount of time that we're going into deep sleep, shifting over into REM sleep, um, and our experience and the results that we have, um, when we wake up in the morning. So going deeper on, uh, beyond just the quantity and looking at that quality. Yeah. And like you said, training the body, you know, as off camera, I was telling you, I just came, came back from a five and a half, six day silent retreat. Yes. TV, no internet, no phone calls, no text messages, no music, no nothing. And, uh, train, I started training my body. I was sound asleep by eight 30 every night and I'd wake up five o'clock in the morning, minus no alarm and ready to go. I was alive at work. I mean, at work, at work, wait, yes. um, but ready to go. And, and so it's training, training my body. Um, and sometimes it does take that to, to get back on a, on a, on a, on a nice sleeping pattern too. So, um, I can't thank you enough. Do you have any closing words for our, for our audience? Uh, yeah, well, one, I just want to, um, thank you for being a part of putting something like this together. I think it can be so beneficial. I've seen, uh, just so many amazing stories of people, uh, you know, being on say Xanax for 16 years and then being able to get off of that over time. And I'm not saying again, uh, you know, listen, work with your doctor, but it can really be so, so beneficial when they're able to use CBD, uh, to help wean off and then, um, really live a life where they're getting richer sleep every single night consistently from that perspective, among many other benefits that they get. Uh, so I think that this is an exciting area that there's still so many questions that we have. Um, but I think the more and more we can have, uh, different people speaking to this and what they're finding in their, uh, industry can really help, um, us kind of crowdsource and improve our results with, um, you know, kind of this whole new world that we're stepping into. Well, I, I appreciate that. Molly McLaughlin, and thank you for sharing your insight, your expertise. Uh, and Molly actually is giving away a bonus VIP uh, pass uh, to our uh, bonus VIP pass to our holders of a, it's a PDF, if it's a PDF of uh, yes. the article. So it's a PDF document. It's called the Optimized Bedroom, 18 Strategic Ch uh, Changes, excuse me. Yeah, changes to create the perfect sleep environment. 18 Strategic Changes to Create the perfect sleep environment. And so that's for our VIP pass members. If you still haven't claimed your VIP pass to access that, which you'll access all the recordings, the transcripts, the MP3s, and your must have bonus packages, you can get it now by clicking the button at the bottom of this page before it's too late. And remember when the event is over, the recordings and all the bonuses do go away. So make sure you claim your VIP pass before it's too late. Molly McLaughlin, I thank you so much for, for being on and sharing your knowledge. Uh, and again, this is John Malanka, and we'll see you soon.